Silvarum by Dean Cooter Narrated by Dan Bottomley Part 1 The Woods Chapter 1 The Rune Stones Grab my hand, said Roger. Pull me up, my foot slipped, replied Marie. I'm trying, he said. Quit whining so much and take my hand before I get bored and leave you dangling up here for the rest of the day. Marie grunted and extended her hand. Her brother grasped it and pulled with all his strength. Emerald and amber leaves spilled through the canopy of the elm tree as she brushed herself off. Your turn, Mackenzie, said Roger. Please don't take forever like your sister. My arm's sore now. Poor baby, replied Marie. I'll only be a second, said Mackenzie. Watch this. Wow, you're almost as good a climber as I am. Almost as good, she said as she ascended the branches. You forget who you're talking to, little brother. I could beat you to the top of a tree any day of the week. Sure, he said. All right, let's do what we came up here to do. Get the pens and roll of parchment out. Marie groaned. Why are you so bossy today? Did Mum take away your allowance again for not keeping that stinky little pig pen you call a room clean? No replied Roger. And I'm not being bossy, you're just too slow. Now hurry up before Mr Bluestream catches us up here. He doesn't care if we're in his tree on another of your silly adventures, Roger, said Mackenzie. Stop picking on Marie and let's just try and have some fun for a change. She turned and winked at her little sister. Thanks, said Marie. Any time. Fine, said Roger. Marie, may I pretty please, with sugar on top, have the parchment and a pen from your backpack? When you ask nicely like that, yes, you may. The teenagers crawled to the edge of a gnarled branch and peered out over the valley. The summer sky was a brilliant blue over the village of Thorndale. I've never seen the town from this perspective, said Marie. How many people do you think live here? Roger unrolled the parchment and organised his map-making supplies. I'd say around 500 or so. No way, replied Mackenzie. I know for a fact that there are 144 villagers. Were you paying attention in class the other day? Mrs Roberts taught us all about the people and history of Thorndale. Of course he wasn't paying attention, said Marie. He was probably daydreaming of fighting goblins and ghosts with his little wooden sword. Or climbing into trees on a perfectly gorgeous Saturday morning said Mackenzie. Actually, replied Roger, not bothering to turn, the reason we're in this tree is to complete the assignment Mrs Roberts gave us. Were you paying attention? We each have to create a detailed map of the town, and my sword isn't wood, it's a finely polished white oak short sword. The girls giggled. Good grief, said Mackenzie. Whatever you say, and we already finished our assignments, for your information. Marie and I went to the library and looked in books to study the village as normal people do. That's not normal, replied Roger. I'm making my map the right way, the adventurer's way. Murkresh taught me that the best method to make a map is to explore the actual area and experience it yourself. What you guys did was cheating and doesn't count. Not that Murkresh again said Marie. Is that where you've been hiding out these days? He's a weird old man. Mom says that we should stay away from him. Why? asked Roger. He turned around to face them. 
Mercresh is very intelligent, and he's been everywhere on great adventures. You should see the maps and drawings and neat stuff in his shop. Mom didn't say why we should stay away from him. She just did. Maybe you should ask her yourself. I'll do that. Now, for the love of the great forest, can you two please let me finish my map in peace? Certainly, great adventurer Roger, replied Mackenzie. Come on, Marie. Let's climb over to the other side and leave bossy pants to his map and wooden swords. It's white oak, he shouted. Whose house is that? asked Mackenzie as she pointed to a gathering of neatly tended farmhouses. A thin sliver of blue smoke curled up from one of the stone chimneys. That's the Leafdale family's house, and next to them are the Rawthorns. Do you know the new girl, Arena? Mackenzie nodded. They moved into town a couple of weeks ago, said Marie. It's just her and her father, but she seems pretty nice. She likes magic at least. Is she as good as you are with magic? She's way better, actually, replied Marie. She did this trick the other day where she made a little garden gnome come to life. Do you know the statue in the middle of Mr Great Main's garden? Arena waved her wand around and the gnome started blinking and looking around. I totally screamed. That's amazing, said Mackenzie. That little guy walked around the garden for a minute and then she turned him back to stone. It was wonderful. She laughed and said that she had named him Philip. I have a feeling she was only playing around, though. I could tell she's really advanced with magic. Do you know where she and her dad moved from? Marie thought for a moment. She told me that they used to live in a village called Briar Gulch. It's somewhere deep in the forest, but I've never heard of it or seen it on any maps. She said they moved here because her dad got a new job at the hospital with Dr. Skybeam. Her dad's a doctor? Yes. Then maybe he can help me with a potion that's been giving me trouble. It's a healing potion. Well, it's supposed to be a healing potion. Actually, all it does now is turn things purple. I asked Frederick to test it out for me and his arm turned a funny shade of purple for an hour. Why it turned purple is a mystery to me, but he said it didn't hurt or anything. Poor Frederick, replied Marie. He always ends up being your test subject. I know, right? said Mackenzie. But he's a good sport about it. I'm surprised that he hasn't grown a tail or gone blind after all the stuff I've made him drink. He likes you. That's why he's a good sport. You think he enjoys being turned weird colours or have disgusting warts grow on his face for the fun of it? Frederick? He's only twelve years old. He's fourteen. And I'm pretty sure he has a crush on you, so maybe you should tone down the medical experiments and be a little nicer to him. Point taken, said Mackenzie. I'll have to find another willing participant. Does Roger have any other goofy friends? Mackenzie, replied Marie with a grin. I'm kidding. The sisters laughed as they peered out over the bustling village. Roger mumbled and cursed to himself on the other side of the massive trunk. A gust of wind had almost blown the roll of parchment out of his lap. Anyway, said Marie, I bet Mr Rawthorn will be able to help you. I haven't talked to him that much, other than a few hellos, but he seems friendly enough. I'll ask Arena for you. We're supposed to hang out tonight. Oh, I wish I could hang with you guys, but Mum wants me to help her with some things around the house. Chores on a Saturday? Why tonight? Because she's lonely and just wants to spend time with you. Since she and Dad separated, I don't think she's been handling the solitude very well. You think so? asked Mackenzie. I do, said Marie. She seems really sad lately. Haven't you noticed? I haven't been around that much. Well, I have been, said Marie, and I've noticed that she's depressed. Now that Dad's gone on this trip of his, she's even worse. She's been pacing back and forth and checking the mailbox a hundred times a day. When was the last time he sent us a letter? About a month ago. A month? That's not good. He was sending them once or even twice a week. I'm sure Dad's fine, and I'm not too worried, said Marie. But Mum definitely is. 
If I were you, I'd spend some time with her tonight and help her with chores or whatever it is she wants you to do. All these recent changes have messed her up, and I think she wants to talk to you about them. You two used to always talk about important stuff together. I guess you're right, replied Mackenzie. I've been so consumed by my projects and adventuring that I haven't been around much this summer. It's nice to be with you now, though, even if we're just sitting up in this tree. Another gust of wind blew the limbs of the elm as Roger shouted out more curse words. The girls grinned and rolled their eyes. Hopefully you can stick around longer this time, said Marie. Good things always happen when the three of us are together. You know that, right? I do, replied Mackenzie, and I'm going to be around more often. As a matter of fact, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Really? What is it? asked Marie. She sat up and stared back at her sister. I have an idea for another adventure through the woods, and I wanted to know if you'd like to join me this time. I'd love to. Where are we going? Into Blackwood Forest. That place is haunted. I know it is, but I've found something on my last trip, replied Mackenzie. A symbol that references a person or creature that lives in there. What did you find? A rune stone. Do you know what those are? You mean the drawing in Mrs. Roberts' class? The one hanging up on the wall above her desk? It has a picture of a stone with a weird symbol carved into it. Right. She sent me to find this rune stone. What? You guys are working together? We are. She studies history and archaeology in addition to being a teacher, and she's been sending me out on these hikes to find old artefacts for her. She even gives me a silver coin for each artefact that I bring back. Wow, said Marie. But why in the world do you need me to go? I've never gone on a long hike like that before, at least not outside of Thorndale Woods. Because you know magic, and, like you said, when the three of us are together, good things happen. Three? You mean you're going to ask Roger to come? I already have, and he's agreed. He can be grumpy and annoying, but he's a decent adventurer. Even though I'd tease him about his sword, he's actually good at using it. I once saw him knock down a giant mole rat with it. This is exciting! exclaimed Marie. The three of us on a dangerous adventure together. But Blackwood Forest, aren't you scared to go in there? Does Mum even know about this idea of yours? Not yet, replied Mackenzie. Maybe tonight is the right time to talk to her about it. Talk to her about it, said Marie. You mean ask for her permission to go? I'm sure the answer will be no way or... How crazy do you think I am, young lady? She might even get upset with you about the previous trips. I wouldn't be so sure. What do you mean? I haven't yet told you what I've found on the runestone to make me want to go into the forest. Marie turned and stared out across the village. A cool breeze swept through the limbs of the tree while the cries of a lone crow pierced the distant hills. A door slammed somewhere down in the village. She turned back to her sister. Is it something to do with Dad? Yes. Oh my, replied Marie, raising a hand to her mouth. There are a few smaller symbols on the back of the stone I found, said Mackenzie. Mrs. Roberts deciphered one of them based on an old book she has. She says the symbol means goth car. What in the world is a goth car? asked Marie. I have no idea, but look at this. Mackenzie pulled a warm piece of paper from her pocket and handed it to her sister. It's a letter from Dad. One of the last he sent, replied Mackenzie. Read the final paragraph. Marie held the paper up to the morning sunlight and read the lines aloud. In the morning I'm headed into Blackwood Forest to find Gothcar. I'm hoping that he'll be able to tell me more about this iron key Brian left me. I'll also ask about the fate of the last runestone. We shall see. Based on my encounter with him when we were kids, he wasn't known for his hospitality. 
I'll write again after I talk to him. Ben. The sisters looked at one another. Dad was supposed to be on a trip for business, but this sure doesn't sound work-related to me, said Marie. Now he's caught up with these runestones too. What is this iron key he mentioned? And was he referring to Uncle Brian? I have no idea, replied Mackenzie. But there's a bigger story in motion here, and it clearly has something to do with these mysterious runestones. What should we do? I think we should talk to Mum tonight and let her know what I've found, replied Mackenzie. Maybe she'll tell us more about this secret trip Dad went on. I'd also like to visit Caldor at the library. Mrs. Roberts said he may be able to translate the other two symbols. That spooky old owl? Mackenzie smiled. He's an intelligent creature and knows a great deal. He'll probably be able to tell us about the Blackwood Forest and this goth car character. All right, replied Marie. Let's go and see if Roger's finished making his map yet or if he's fallen out of his tree.